I'm not saying it's a losing strategy, but I'm not convinced it's a winning strategy either. It is an excellent approach, just not all the time, and I'll prove it if you give me a moment. Did you know that according to aerodynamics, a bumblebee isn't supposed to be able to fly? Wow. Also, did you know what I shared is a myth and not a fact? A sad reality of our human nature is if something is repeated enough, we are much more inclined to believe it and less likely to challenge the idea. As someone who follows behavioral finance, I'm often very concerned about herd mentality and confirmation bias. These two frames make us more likely to challenge concepts that don't fit our belief system and to accept storylines that seem quote unquote right without putting the idea to the test. Our lives are full of these myths and widely held but false beliefs, but when it comes to investing, these myths can at best reduce the amount of money you make and at worst cost you money. In my world, this makes them dangerous. The challenge is that these myths arise and propagate because they seem to make logical sense. And if it makes logical sense, after all, shouldn't we believe it, right? To be successful investors, we have to learn to separate truth and facts from beliefs and myths. And one of the first places to start is by understanding what something is really based off of. And if they are using faulty logic or when the idea has not been adequately tested against all the other relevant factors. And we see this in the metals market all the time. Going back to the bumblebee, it seems to date back to the 1930s when a aerodynamicist and a biologist were talking. I know this sounds like a bad dad joke, but stay with me. According to the tale, the aerodynamicist did some quick calculations and concluded that based on the weight and wing area, these bees should not be able to fly at all. Regardless, we know that just isn't correct. The bumblebee isn't participating in some type of anti-law of physics sorcery. As a quick aside, the way bumblebees fly is actually quite fast, fascinating and complicated. First, they have actually four wings. Secondly, their wings flap up and down and front to back. And if that wasn't enough, they can actually simultaneously rotate them, creating like a figure eight to actually create enough lift to fly. Okay, I'm pretty sure you didn't click on the video to learn about bumblebee flight. But my point is that the promotion of dollar cost averaging is based on an incomplete logical argument, similar to how the engineer determined that a bee shouldn't be able to fly. I want to be clear. My goal isn't to convince you that dollar cost averaging is a bad idea because that isn't accurate. It is an excellent approach, just not all the time. Instead of viewing dollar cost averaging as an investing framework or approach or strategy, I want you to think of it more as a technique or a tactic, or maybe like one of the tools in your toolbox. What's the saying? If you only have a hammer, everything in the world seems like a nail. Dollar cost averaging is a great approach for the average investor who just wants to put their money to work and not have to think about it. I hate to tell you this, folks, but you're not the average investor. By virtue of you just watching this video alone, you are doing more work, more research, and more learning than the average person. This is why I don't want you to rely solely on an average technique or approach. Whenever we engage in healthy debate, it's important to make sure that we are all using the same terms, which is actually the first dangerous, uh, danger associated with dollar cost averaging. Unfortunately, dollar cost averaging is often used in a way that it really wasn't intended. Dollar cost averaging was really supposed to be used as an investing method for deploying an existing lump sum of cash, ideally around a key buying point. This can be especially effective when used with technical analysis. For example, take a look at this weekly chart of gold and notice those two red circles along with the white lines that seem to be creating a falling wedge pattern. Those circles represent where I've done a majority of my buying over the last two years. This is what separates above average investors from everyone else. This is why over the last two and a half years, my average cost for gold is just over $1,800. And yes, I got the receipts along with dozens of videos where I've told you in real time when I was and I was not buying and why. This, my friends, is what we have to get right, especially for those of us who hold physical gold and silver. I've seen this over and over again. Just because you got paid and you have money in the bank doesn't mean you need to rush to the LCS and spend, spend, spend like drunken sailors. I know. It's easier to simply say, I'm just going to buy every month around the same time, and in the long run, it will work itself out. Plus, let's be honest, buying more frequently gives us that hit of dopamine, that happy hormone, and that always feels good. The danger is that this logic and approach is not optimal. It doesn't allow you to maximize the amount of metal you can get for your money. The hypers just tell you that you should always be buying. Think about this. Dollar cost averaging works well as a strategy when prices are falling. But tell me how does it work when prices are in an uptrending market? If the goal is to maximize your investments, we simply have to be more sophisticated than dollar cost averaging. Go back to my videos of in March and April of 2022. I documented very clearly how I wasn't buying metals at that time because it seemed clear to me 
that there was a lot more downside to price. I told you that I was taking a sideline strategy, that I wasn't going to try to catch a falling knife. So I waited and I waited and my patience was rewarded six months later when I was buying like crazy in the mid 1600s. Yes, you could have dollar cost averaged down over those six months and still been very happy. However, I was much happier that I had saved all that money from not dollar cost averaging down and instead I was able to buy significantly more towards the bottom. And it doesn't seem like a lot right now, but these little efforts, these little moments where you have where you can create the most optimal buying opportunity is how you actually leverage your returns and get even better returns. I did the exact same thing in 2023. It wasn't that I had a crystal ball and I'm sure luck helped absolutely, but it took me knowing four main things that we discuss on this channel all the time. And I want you to make sure you burn these into your head and you really learn them. One, market conditions. No matter what the hypers said back then, which is probably what they're still saying right now, the market was not ready to take off. Folks, unless a black swan happens or there's a big outbreak in war, the market still isn't ready and it ain't gonna be ready until the second half of this year. Two, technical analysis. The charts were telling us that we were in a downtrend and nothing showed that it was changing. Remember, on some real levels, technical analysis is just a visual representation of market sentiment and what the herd is doing and because it's people that we're talking about, people create these reoccurring patterns that can be used to our advantage. Three, gold seasonality. Again, how many times have I shown you this chart of how metals have historically performed during each month of the year? Remember the saying, the trend is your friend until the end. These last two points are all about following and trusting the trends. Reason four, fear, good old fashioned fear. We've covered this before. But when it comes to gold and silver, you can almost throw out every other indicator and simply assess the level of fear in the market. That will tell you how close we are to quote unquote taking off. Nothing, I mean nothing moves the metals market and gold market in particular like fear. Be it fear of recession, fear of inflation, fear of loss of purchasing power or geopolitical concerns. Fear absolutely moves this market. Please don't walk away from this video thinking that I'm saying dollar cost averaging is a bad idea. What I want you to walk away with is the idea that, that you as the non-average investor can absolutely do better than accepting this as a singular approach. When investing, your approach has to be responsive to the market and you have to be skilled enough to adjust your strategy based on what the market is doing. In the Bible, it tells us, quote, there's an opportune time for, to do things a right time for everything on the earth, a right time for birth and another for death, a right time to plant and another to reap, a right time to destroy and another to construct, a right time to hold and another to let go. Dollar cost averaging has lots of upsides that simply can't be ignored, such as it helps you develop discipline because you're, apt, you're actively choosing and developing the habit of buying metals. Psychologically, it's helpful because it helps overcome the fear and the angst of investing and seeing the price go down as it simply reframes the market loss as a market drop and that drop being your friend that helps you buy more the next time you buy, essentially reducing emotionality and the impact of price volatility. It also really helps build wealth over time, especially as your income tends to decrease over time while taking the guesswork out of investing and just reducing the perceived risk and associated stress. At the same time, most every serious study conducted over the last 30 years has concluded that dollar cost averaging is a suboptimal investing technique. Dollar cost averaging has been shown to be no more advantageous than randomly investing. In fact, a majority of studies have shifted from exploring dollar cost averaging and actually exploring why people believe dollar cost averaging is better. Ultimately, we as people like solutions to problems that don't require us to change or require little effort from us. Dollar cost averaging is so loved because it's simple and it seems correct. It's our nature to challenge what seems like it doesn't make sense to us and to accept things that seem right. Without putting that to the test, my challenge for you is that I want you to go and spend just one hour learning more about either technical analysis, gold seasonality, or gold market conditions. In the comments, which of these three topics do you plan to learn more about? Technical analysis, gold seasonality, or gold market conditions? In the comments, write, I commit 
to show to the YouTube world that you're actually going to do this. Or you can simply put an A plus in the comment section so that everyone knows that you always stack smarter and never stop learning.